guys, that's your commander, your name, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I am glad to have you with me today. Oh, today's gonna be a controversial one, boys and girls, because I'm talking, I'm actually defending, I should say, a champion who a lot of other people talk smack about, and it's not cool. And no, it's not Silva Drinks. We've already done a video on that. But honestly, if you, I actually had Scratch on the uh, on the channel. I'm not sure if that video is going to go live the day after today or the day before today. And he was making my point, man. We went to, we picked out the worst legendary in every single faction of the game, right? We got down to Ogryn Tribe and my man, who does he pick out? Yeah, I'm going to go straight for Drogalin here. Like, no questions asked. He picks out Drakkar the Gaunt. I don't know why this dude gets so much hate from people. People, man they're all just jealous of me i want to be clear here i'm not sitting here saying he's the best champion in the game i don't think he's an s tier champion i don't even think he's an a tier champion but i think he's a b plus and everybody i've ever had in the channel even you guys in the comments you slay this dude here you have a desk chest of drawers it's mine yes sir never had one before if I talk about the worst champions in the game and I don't mention Drakkar, inevitably I get about a half a dozen comments at least saying, what about Drakkar the Gaunt? He sucks. I think this dude was a fragment summon like three years ago, if I remember correctly. And I've always had a soft spot. First of all, it's the Sis Sisyphus, Sisyphus uh, thing going on here where he's carrying this big dang rock all the time up and down the Ogren tribe hill. Feel bad for the dude. He's actually, he's pretty gaunt. I would say, I would say he's pretty gaunt, right? He doesn't look like as strong as you think he'd be carrying this big stone. I mean, what, are the, what does that mean? It's kind of cryptic. Anyway, I like this dude. I really do. First of all, you don't see him much in the end game outside Cursed City or restrictive content. But in terms of progression, if I was starting a new account and I pulled a Drakkar the Gaunt, I wouldn't be thrilled, you know, compared to who you could pull. But I wouldn't be disappointed because this dude can carry me in so many different areas of the game. Let's talk about why and then I'll demonstrate for you guys. First, I just want to start on the stats. By the way, we picked out the worst legendary in the faction. And without missing a beat, Scratch was like, Drakkar the Gaunt. I'm like, no, no, no. He's got 23k base HP. That puts him in the above average territory. That gives you a lot of versatility with this dude. You can put him in a, in a, in a shield set. You can put him in a bolster set if you have the gear. You can put him in a mortal set. It's really easy to scale that HP. It's hard to kill this guy, right? On his a and his speed is 107, man. Rosin Scarhide's 91. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm cherry picking the biggest example of a desperately needed speed buff in this game. But 107 from a tanky support champion, you just don't really see that that often in this game, man. I love Drunkle, man. Can you tell? Uh, babe, we have to go. No, we're going. This one's coming with us. He's got the Bone Break Boulder on his A1 attacks one enemy. 40% chance to land a stun. He's an HP-based damage dealer, but he's not dealing much damage, right? But he's got a stun. On the A2, he's got an increased attack and an increased defense on all allies on a three-turn cooldown. Sure, we have Mithrala Life Bane, who's quite a bit better than that with a Hex. Sure, we even have an Epic who has that ability in Gizkard the Sagiled. So, I grant you, it's not the best ability, it's not an earth-shatteringly amazing ability, but it's pretty rare to find both of those both of those buffs, both of those essential buffs in the same ability, right? In the same skill, I should say. He's also putting block damage for one turn on allies with less than 30% HP. That's a beautiful add-on to an already serviceable ability. His A3, I heard for years, guys, for years, that this was broken didn't work. Like it was bugged or something and Plarium didn't fix it. And I have no problems with this ability whatsoever, personally. I've never had any problem. I'll demonstrate it for you guys. Runestone Blessing, four turn cooldown when booked. Plays a shield buff equal to 15% of this champion's max HP on all allies for three turns. So the bad news, number one, is a four turn cooldown. But the good news is we get the shield for three of those turns, provided it stays on. Even if it doesn't stay on, we get a bonus. And that's the big long passive effect, right? So... I mean, okay, just a shield on an ability. I think a lot of people are deterred by this or turned off by this. A shield? That's all you got, man? I and mean, Claude Beast Feeder or whatever has it. Does he have a shield? Maybe he doesn't. Uh, who am I thinking of? Either way. Uh, Dudin, right? The, <laughs> a lot of epics have shields on four-turn cooldowns. But the passive effect here 
heals each ally by 15% of this champion's max HP. When a shield buff placed by this skill is broken, removed, or broken by an enemy attack, allies whose shields buffed will be broken will also counterattack the enemy that breaks the shield. When a shield is broken, the heal occurs instantly before any remaining damage from the shield breaking attack is taken. What this actually does, and I just want to demonstrate it for you guys, right? And he has HP in all battles on the aura by 25% too. So a good aura lead in areas where you don't have another aura lead, right? Some more survivability and it his HP obviously benefits his, uh, you know, the shield and the heal as well. Now, 15% doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 15% of a very easily scalable HP on this dude as well. Started to take a 10-minute dissertation or 6-minute dissertation on Dracul the Gaunt. But there's a lot there that can help a lot of players. And saying it pisses me off is a super, a super, super, super over-exaggeration because it certainly doesn't. But it's kind of irritating to see people continuously crapping on this dude, right? So let me show you how I have him built. And this is, again... This is a dude who you can use in the end game, right? Because Curse City, I've used him in, in, in a few different areas in Curse City so far. Some of the most challenging content in the game. He's actually a big reason with his heals, right? He's got the survivability of the shield, but he has those heals that actually is a pivotal role. Because in a lot of areas, I don't have access to another healer on my team, right? In some of this restrictive content, right? And you might be in that, that boat if you're a new player, right? Or if you're a progression player. And even so... Who can't use a shield, increase defense, increase attack, block damage, a stun, you know? I think a lot of people could use that, could take advantage of that. Now, it is awkward to have only accuracy necessary for his A1 on the stun. That's kind of a bummer, so I decided to punt it, semi-sort of. You guys can make the decision that you want. Now, I already had a bolster champion on my team, already built. I forgot who it was, I'll show you in a moment. So I went triple immortal. Why not get... A, like a, a boatload 45% extra HP just from a set bonus and why not get a, a three percent a nine percent heal excuse me three times three on every single turn right I think immortal and cruel are really next to perception and righteous it they're so strong like those those old school clan boss sets and, and if you've been playing it for any amount of time you have that gear they're both so so strong and maybe underutilized given the prevalence of both of those, you know, artifacts on accounts. Anyway, I don't have insane gear. I don't have I don't have almost anything ascended here, only the chest piece. 50, uh, HP with HP percentage, right? I have speed on the boots. I have HP percentage, obviously, on the chest. I don't even have it glyphed out, you know, for the most part. I have a I threw HP, obviously, on all the accessories I'm imagining here. HP, I was looking for speed. I wanted to build, because he's my healer, and he's my buffer, and he's my shielder. I wanted him fast, so right, I went HP on the banner, I went HP on the amulet, and I went HP on the ring. He's super easy to build. Just a lot of HP and as much speed as you can get, basically, on this dude. Now, you don't want to totally neglect defense because we want him to be able to take a hit, you know, but he's not a provoker. He's not an ally protector. He's not going to be taking an insane amount of damage. It's, it's all about stacking HP. So I'm going HP percentage, HP percentage, gauntlet's chest, HP, HP, HP on the accessories, unless you really want him to land, have a chance of landing that 40% stun on the A1, right? Emergency heal was made for this dude. Emergency heal is such a strong and fun uh, blessing, but you have two amazing options for blessings. Emergency heal is healing him when a shield is removed, right? So, you know, that's pretty intuitive. But the other one is faultless defense. You know what? I'm gonna change him to faultless defense because I haven't, I haven't, I've tried it out, but not a lot so far. This one is super self-explanatory as well. Whenever an enemy attacks an ally under increased defense placed by this champion, reflects a portion of the damage back to the attacker. Okay, so why not? We get six percent reflected damage. It adds up. It's not gonna be huge, but it adds up. Now he's got a little bit of damage in his kit because of this Faultless Defense. I think Faultless Defense was a really underrated and very cool Blessing rework. For Masteries on this dude, oh man, I actually have a very, very, very old Mastery build. But you know what? I'll stand by it. It's fine. Um, 
I think probably just going offense and a support on this dude would be totally fine. Uh, we have a defense support. You're leaving a little bit of damage off the table by not going War Master, but that's, you know, to each his own. Uh, we have defense down here, kind of a little bit of an unorthodox defense build too. I do love Rejuvenation though, and I do love Shadow Heal, so nothing wrong with either of those options, if I do say so myself. I might actually, well, no, I to take it back. I was going to say I might take away Lay on Hands and go blast proof instead for damage mitigation but i don't think i don't think so i went with the hp i went with lay on hands increase the value of heals he casts he's a great healer super underrated on that a3 increase the value of shields that he casts on top of that right we have rapid response whenever a buff he has two buffs on his a uh two and one on his a three uh we get a turn meter fill why not we have lore of steel we have three basic sets with the immortal we went down we picked up blasting gifts lasting gifts to extend the duration of the shield to four turns they increase defense to three turns they increase attack to three turns Heck yeah! And then we came down, we ended things off with Timely Intervention. For the same reason that we want Timely Intervention on our healers, on our revivers, we want it on him. Increases champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally hero drops below 25%. Why is it so imperative to get that on him? Because he can get back to that block damage. Because keep in mind, on his A2 ability, he's adding block damage to anybody under 30% HP. So if we have an ally with less than 25% HP, he can come in and save the day with the block damage on the A2. So he can add a lot to the, he can add a lot to your team, man. I feel like I am absolutely politicking for this dude in today's video, right? Am I convincing any of you guys? Am I convincing anybody out there? I can't hear you. Let's go ahead and see him in action. Now, obviously, you can use him in any dungeon in the damn game, right? He's he's a he's a he's a versatile support buffer, right? All right, guys. So here he is. One of the most challenging floors that I would say I've beaten in Soul Cross, especially floors that do, do allow you to use legendaries, albeit, you know, limited. Uh, it's super hard. It's super hard. It took me quite a few tries to get it, so I'm not sure if I will include, you know, how many attempts I should say I'll include in this video, but Drakul is absolutely key. He's my only healer. I do have a reviver in uh, in good old Molly Tankard, uh, but I can't keep her. Oh, I find it challenging to keep her alive. We start out against Taurus and Marichka. Two turn provoke on both of them. I hate it. Let's try to go in the A2, of course, our fear procs uh, from Taurus. Fantastic. Let's ally attack. We have Farrakhan and the Fat on the team as well. Trying to neutralize Marichka. And of course, we don't land the stun. And everything's going the worst case scenario. We don't get Shamrock. You know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to do exactly what I would do. Well, you know what? I'm not going to cancel the run. Normally, I would just cancel and hope for better RNG because that's the luxury that you have, right? Uh, when you are... When you are facing something that costs you nothing to do, uh, the luxury that you have is you can restart runs to get the optimal start. So normally I might restart here, but we still have everybody provoked at least, and we have everybody alive on our squad. So let's see what we can do here. It's two Tauruses, one Marichka, Sathalia, who's going to be the biggest pain. We'll save her for last because she can self-heal on a short cooldown, and she's, ma or she's magic affinity against all spirit, right? So not good, not good. Bad news is the second wave has two Basatas. And they're really annoying, right? They're really annoying. They're both magic affinity, tanky, tanky HP based champions who can deal some damage too. So, yeah, we don't like this. <laughs> we don't like this. So, we're going to come in here. Jetney the Giant is our only really damage on this team, other than, you know, just all the A1s on the ally attacks. So, we have a two turn stun, thanks to Taurus A2 on Drakul the Gaunt. Things are not looking so good right now. We can't have Molly die. She's our only reviver. So things are very dangerous. Luckily, Shamrock, who's another incredibly underrated champion, has a revive on death and a continuous heal on his A2. So Molly gets saved by the big fella. I want to go in there and I want to kill, even if it costs me her dying, I want to kill Marichka. And of course, she doesn't die. We actually would have preferred she die. Well, I think it's fine. Uh, she keeps the increased defense at least. But this Taurus right here is provoked. He's going to go after her right now. And she doesn't have the revive on death. What she does have is the shield. And most importantly, the heal. Check this heal out, guys. The heal is, is a big heal, right? Bigger than the shield. Shield, not very impressive. Check this out. Okay. He didn't even get rid of the shield. Forget it. Check it out on the next one. <laughs> All right. So we go in. We go in. Stalt is down. Now two Tauruses in the Sathalia. Yeah, I, I still want to provoke here. 
I was thinking about it. I'm like, wait a sec. Now I get block damage from Dracula's A2. Now I don't have to worry about any of this crap, right? They're provoked. She's got block damage. We don't care. All right. You know what? It feels like now's a pretty good time to try to take Sathalia down. Her HP is pretty low. We can maybe land a stun. Jet Need a Giant has a stun on the A1. This is actually looking pretty good here. I'm going to A2 right now. We kill Sathalia. Hey, that's my show. That was amazing. It probably didn't seem that way to you guys because you're like, dude, that seemed pretty easy, Ash. Nah, that took me probably like 10 tries <laughs> just to get this far into this run the first time that I tried it. Everything's going pretty well here so far. RNG-wise, we're able to keep Molly alive, most importantly. We do have a, uh, a Taurus right now who's not provoked. Alert, alert. Constant pressure does come down. It does do some damage, but we're going to be okay. Instead of going with the A3 on Shamrock, I want to go in the A2, put another continuous heal and a revive on death on Molly. I'm going to come in and... I should have went after the other Taurus, but I think we'll be okay. Knock on wood. Let's try to CC the Taurus who is not uh, uh, CC'd. Can we get a stun or something? No, we don't have enough accuracy on Drakkel. I probably should have just put an accuracy banner on him just so I can try to land that stun sometimes. But you see the shield falls off. Actually, yeah, you see the shield falls off and we get that nice heal on Molly. It's all Drakkel, man. It's all Drakkel. Uh, I have to provoke right now. Oh, we got to resist on the provoke. This is not good. Is this the Taurus with constant pressure off cooldown? You know what, guys? Let's just be on the safe side. Because as we just said, you know, a few times, that shield is really like a big heal that comes before the damage, right? In this case, it doesn't matter. We're safe to A1 cycle here. So let's switch Tauruses. This guy has Brimstone or Smite. He's going to die anyway to the Smite. So we made it past the first wave. You guys see that, though? You see the... I'm not sure if it was a good example, but you see those heals? They're big heals that come after the shield. So, I mean, again, he's our healer. He's our shielder. We do have a continuous heal on allies at less than 50% HP on... Uh, well, I said he was going to die to that, didn't I? Smite. I hope that smite kills him this time. Golly. All right, Taurus's. At least we have ample opportunity here to A1 cycle. Trying to make this as entertaining as I possibly can to you guys. I don't know how much you love Curse City Wave content here on the channel, but let's try it out. Okay, so this is where we get Sulfurian's going to be our first target. He's going to be their reviver. We did get a resist there on that. Uh, we don't need the shield right now. We have the bolster set. Shamrock's in a bolster set. Let's go ahead. We have a two-turn provoke against their reviver. It's tempting to ignore him for a moment and start chipping away at a Basatha, but I think it's still the right move to go after Sulfurian. So we go after him. Now he's stunned. He's provoked. He's got all the CCs. We want to go in, land that decrease speed. Thanks to Shamrock on everybody. Let's debuff and do some damage with the A2 of Jetney the Giant. We get Rowdy Crowd procs off of the passive of uh, Molly. We're going to go in there and keep doing damage. Molly can smack with her A1, so that's great. We still have a shield on everybody except for Molly Tankard. It's on a four-turn cooldown, but I actually think... No, it's not the right move. <laughs> Let's keep it going here. I'm like, I actually think I should just use it and replace the shield and get the heals. We don't need it yet. We don't need it yet. Let's not be, let's not jump the gun here. I'm also going to do something I rarely do, and I'm actually going to sit on the A2. And because on A1 of Shamrock, he can steal buffs, right? Each hit. Um, so let's try to go, after, what buffs do we want here? Let's go after these. And we pick up something there. I didn't notice what it was, but we pick up something. So we're coming in here. We're doing some nice damage. These Bathsathas are going to be a... They're going to be a real big pain to kill. They got a lot of HP. Weak hits galore from our end. They've got a lot of survivability in their kit as well. Let's steal that strengthen. Awesome. Let's provoke everybody. Great. Bathsatha has a continuous heal and ally protect to strengthen all this baloney that I don't want to deal with. Let's get the increased attack for Jetney the Giant, most importantly. She's going to go in there. Not quite kill, but we're chipping away here. With Shamrock, Shamrock, man, he could very easily be the the spotlight of today's video. I could say the same thing about Shamrock that I do about Drakkel the Gaunt. The only difference is I don't see people hating on Shamrock as much, you know? Let's go ahead and try to steal that from Basatha. We stole the Strengthen. Great. Uh... Yeah, that's the only thing, but I think they're just, you know, arguably you could even make the case that he's, uh, the Shamrock is 
is better than Drockle the Gone. I think I would make that case. Uh, but he's, I think, I'm a big, big fan of Shamrock. Okay, so Jetney does end up killing, uh, what, what is this dude's name? Crack, eh, crack, 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 or something, Cork, Korak. <laughs> I don't have him. So, uh, I think you guys like him from, the, from what I remember, but like him, not love him. Is that accurate? All right, we're losing our... We're not losing our Molly, but I'm a little bit concerned. At least we stunned there. I'm actually going to... Uh, is she below 50% HP? I think she is. Let's put the continuous heal on her right now. Better be safe than sorry. Let's... Uh, yeah, let's put the shield so we can have her nice and healed up. Between the continuous heal and when that shield expires, we'll get Molly at full health to go into the next wave where we have to deal with Yumekos and Karak uh, uh, Karatos. Karakos, bro. Where's my mind at? I don't know. I hate that there's a four-turn cooldown on Shamrock's A3, but I'm going to use it anyway just because these two are going to take forever to kill. We're going to easily <laughs> be able to cycle past that. As a matter of fact, I'm still going to CC here. It's not time to A1 cycle just yet because these two dudes are tanky. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can even go in the A2 on Jetney the Giant, right? We can even do that. Let's ally attack this Basatha in the back, try to place a decreased defense or a stun on him. And we get neither of the two. Fantastic. Let's just keep chipping away at the one with low health. Keep in mind, they do have this. It's not an ally protect. My bad. It's a strengthen and continuous heal, not an ally protect. Thank God. All right. Uh, okay. We're going to go in. One's almost down. Keep in mind, they have a st an AoE stun, which we just saw. And they can deal some damage, too. All right. I think we're good to A1 cycle at this point. Now, what I could do is, what I should do is burn it right now. A1 cycle, and then the, everybody will get healed going into the next wave from the shield expiring, right? So look at Molly Tankar. She has one turn left. Look at her. Look at her. Uh, just start looking at her health. Look at how big the the uh, the heal is going to be here. Uh, yeah, we're good. We stole the strength and the here we go. It's about to go. She'll pop off and boom, 19k heal. And obviously, you saw the build. We could stack up the, uh, we could stack the HP a lot higher, make that into a 20, 30k heal, depending on the gear, the HP gear that you have on your account, right? So now we can A1 cycle into the third wave. We're 10 minutes here, guys. I've had you for 10 minutes on this. Hopefully, I can, I can see you all in my head tuning out. Be like, I get the point. All right, bye, Ash. But the two of you still here. Hey, it's a, it's a Jingwang sighting here, guys. Uh, oops. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. That was a bad move. I hope I don't lose it now. All at the end. Oh, gosh. Uh, okay. It's go time. Let's add increased defense on everybody right now. Let's go ahead and ally attack on... Shoot. Who would you guys ally attack here? I'm going to do something that probably all of you are shocked at. And I'm actually going to ally, atta ally attack Jingwan. Because he's the only one I can land debuffs on right now. And of course, I don't land any anyway. Uh, let's just go in there, land a decrease speed on him, come in. I feel I feel like we should just A1 and keep chepping away at, at Jingwan and take the take all this stuff that's going to come at us, right? You know what? I shouldn't have A1 there since our, our skills were going to go off cooldown from Yumeko anyway. I should have just went with the A2, but I don't think it's that big of a difference. They wouldn't have taken that much damage anyway. Uh, our target's going to be Yumeko here, but... It's actually tempting when her veil goes away, but it's actually tempting. Karato is like super squishy, so it's easy to pop him off nice and easy here. And he's, uh, he's Spirit Affinity. But the good move about this team is, I mean, look at him. We don't have to deal with, neg with Magic Affinity on this third wave. So I would say this third wave is by far the easiest out of everything that we're facing here. We have a Provoke Tarima, so she's not going to A2 or A3 or Provoke us or anything crazy like that. We're going to come in, finish off Karato, even though he's Provoked. We are going to now start uh, shielding everybody on our team so we can heal them up vis-a-vis -vis Draco the Gaunt. Going to go in there, we're going to stun, prevent her turn. Let's start shipping away at Harima number one. There's the Provoke. We're going to have another one coming at us in a moment. We'll just keep chipping away here, slowly but surely, get me strong attacks to land. 
another AOE comes down. Only one, pro, uh, only one ally provoked. We go in, we stun. Oh, look at that. You, you really do gain, if, if nothing else, even if you don't like this uh, Centrano's content, if nothing else, it, it really does allow you to gain a, a healthy appreciation for different types of, of champions or, you know, on your account, right? Uh, guys like Shamrock, guys like Jetney the Giant, or gals like Jetney the Giant, you know? All right, two left. We can go full auto there, guys. Listen, I could sit here and, and run my man Drockle the Gaunt in Faction Wars. Can run him in Ice Golem, which I love him in Ice Golem, by the way. Keep in mind, when the Ice Golem comes with those big AoE swings... Keep in mind, Drockle the Gaunt, he is healing everybody before they take the damage. So you don't wipe, you know? Uh, you can run him, you can run him, you know, anywhere that you need a, a really good support and buffer, right? I don't know, have I talked to anybody, literally anybody in the in the entire viewership, have I talked to you into Drockle the Gaunt? Or are you somebody who's on my side of the fence? Somebody who actually didn't mind Drockel or liked Drockel even before they clicked on the video. Or if there's somebody you're just like, dude, you did not convince me at all. He sucks. I don't care what your opinion is. You let me know what you think of this dude in the comments below. We're certain is, uh, certainly seeing uh, a decent amount, not a ton, but a decent amount of Drockel the Gaunt here. People are just sleeping on Drockel, man. They're just sleeping on Drockel the Gaunt. Uh... I felt this way for a long time, but hey, it was a cool opportunity to also spotlight Jetney and Shamrock. A lot of Rorik uh, Worm being in here as well. Maybe he'll be the next. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys. Bye.